What is up, Cog Squad? Our egg hatching game just got real. What is up, Cog Squad? Well, we got a mess of eggs. We got to get an incubator today. Got something that's going to step our incubating game up. But let's go take care of these hoolums down here this morning. And then we're going to go back inside and get these incubators in the uh get these incubators oh man get these eggs in the incubator the quail eggs um we'll go over quail eggs uh, we're not an expert with but we have been getting some information from a quail farm that is let's feed our farm check on things around here and then let's incubate some eggs today hey babies This one little brown silky, Mrs. Kakeel wanted to put in here with the rest of them. No eggs. How are y'all liking your new digs? What do you think, Miss Sally? Hmm? You like it? Yeah. Now we are building a porch out there and we're gonna build a covered run for these guys where they can go in and out and be protected for aerial predators. But so far, so good. Let's go check on April and her baby. April! April still only has one chick. I think that's all April's gonna hatch. She's still sitting on eggs, as you can see. And there is JP's baby that April had for. April is a sizzle, which is a curly feathered silky, pretty much is what that is. And silkies are notorious of being great mothers. They're extremely broody, and they really, really do take care of chicks when they hatch. They just don't lay many eggs. And maybe that's why they're so broody and such great mothers, because they don't lay many eggs. So the ones they do lay, they have to take really good care of. You know anything about hatching quail? I mean, I didn't mean to wake you up, but I was just curious if you knew anything. You got a new, you know, incubator, and thought you may know how to work it. All right, if uh, got any questions, I'll come ask you. Look what we just got in. A GQF 1502 Sportsman cabinet style incubator. We just got it in. We got to put this thing together and this should hatch some quail this thing right here is a boy dog let me tell you it has got oh i just this is gonna hatch a lot of eggs right here we really not gonna have to worry about not having any room anymore for hatching eggs as you know we just got a bunch of eggs the other day mrs cockhill's birthday so we needed something really really bigger than what we got we've been using the styrofoam style incubators uh, we had a couple of hubbaders and then we had a arcom so this right here is a big step up from what we have and this is exactly what we need and i'll put a link down to their website down below so if y'all interested in any gqf stuff the link will be down below and i'm so excited about this thing so let's it's not much to put together 
but let's get it started. This thing just came with some shipping bolts uh, to keep the door closed during shipping. We gotta take these out. Once I get this out, there's a latch that goes right here. Right yep, that's it right there. Oh man, I put it on backwards. We need to read the And, oh, these are the feet. Right here. This is the feet for it. Unplug the incubator, gently lay it on its side. See, it's gonna line up perfectly. Ugh. We have power. Let me show you how this thing works. It's got two big fans here for airflow, and it's got one, two, three racks. Now the racks will hold uh, four trays. So we'll slide one in here, and we'll slide one here, and then they'll be double stacked. So you got a total of 12 trays in here, and I forget how many eggs it is, but somewhere around 12, 13, 1400, I think, how many whole quail eggs. This has got a hatching box right here. All right, this is how the humidity works. You'll fill this thing up with water. And it's got these wicking pads. And you'll set them down in these slots. You see, it's got two slots. You set it down in the slot, and that's how the humidity is created. And the fans blow across this wicking pad and create humidity inside the cabinet pretty darn cool the turners are set to turn i think every hour so these things are turn this is what the racks look like and the eggs sit down here and i'll show you this in just a second and they make different size racks depending on what eggs this is a quail rack um then they got one a bit bigger this is like a bantam egg pheasant uh that size bird rack and we got some of those and then you can get the regular chicken egg rack. And you can just get all different types of rack. All right, let's load this booger up with a bunch of quail eggs. If you are interested in quail or quail eggs, JK Farm is going to start selling them and shipping them. The best way to contact them is, is via email. Those are Georgia Giant Bob Whites. Their email address is digirl46 at a ol.com I'll put that down in the description so you guys can contact them. JK Farm, really good folks. Stan and Kathy, super people. So if you're dealing with them, it's going to be top notch. Alright, let's load this sucker, Mary Carl. You bringing the eggs? <laughs> That's to blow off some steam Loading it up, loading it up. Now what Stan did tell us, JK Farm is, is for us to leave a row open on that top rack. Because since this one's double stacked, it goes and turns because the turner does like this. And it has a tendency to maybe hit this top shelf and crack those. So he said just leave that row off which we didn't have quite enough to fill up a whole rack. We got this rack filled up. We got one more rack to go. From what I gather, it's about a 50% hatch rate on quail eggs. That's just what for research I've uh, found. Stan says he gets anywhere from 60 to 70 because he's gotten really, really good at doing it. And that's considered very, very excellent hatch rate. So if we do get 50%, we don't quite have the 1400, but we got a lot of eggs. If they half hatch, we're probably looking at somewhere around 500 eggs hatching. But then you're just probably going to be, I don't know what the rate of survival rate is after that. It'll be something we'll have to just learn as we go further. Humidity, you want it to be around 45 to 55%. So from what I gather is on Bob White's on day around day 20, you want to up that humidity to about 65 to 75%. And they kind of call that lockdown mode. Once you get it in lockdown mode, 
Don't open the incubator. The membrane of a quail egg is so much thicker than the membrane of a chicken egg. So if it dries out, it'll basically just shrink wrap the little chicks up. You don't want to open this sucker until they're all hatched. So what temperature do you want it on? You want to keep your temperature around 99.5 to 100. That's what you're looking for. Another thing that's different between quail eggs than chicken eggs that I didn't know until we started handling quail, and that was handling the eggs. You want to wear gloves. The oils in your hands clog up the holes in the in the egg because each egg, the egg's porous. It's got teeny tiny holes all in it. But we are so happy the GQF 1502 incubator. So happy about this thing. We have the ability to hatch a lot more things and do it more efficiently. We're gonna start. We're gonna start trying to, you know, hatch some some crazy stuff. Uh, Mary Carl is really wanting some cool chickens, so we're looking at the mosaic chicken, the death layer chicken. Um, she wants a olive egger. Uh, also, if you guys want us to hatch something. Let us know in the comments below and we may try to do that as well. As a matter of fact, we may go right now order some eggs off eBay. Hey guys, if you like smiling and having fun and want to know what's like living on a family farm, hit that subscribe button right over here. Also, there's a couple of other videos over here I think you may like. And if you're interested in any cock hill farm gear like this lettuce, romaine calm, and carry it on shirt, check out that link right down below me. And as always, y'all be good.